today we will take a look at the first declension okay and as we saw conjugation we conjugate the verbs we decline the nouns and now we will see the cases that we did in the introduction all those cases will be putting into use so therefore in a way you also need to kind of remember what each case meant so what is the nominative what is the genitive what is the dative accusative and the ablative So as I said in Latin we have five declensions and they keep on getting tougher and tougher. The first is the simplest one along with the fifth, then second and fourth are on the similar level, little bit more complex and the third one is the most complex. So in for the first declension. Let's take a look at the endings first. Just as for the conjugations, you had kind of learned by memory the endings. For the declensions also, you have to learn these endings by memory. Okay, there is no other escape from this. I will give you an example with which things will be clear. So, let's take the word Regina which means Queen So in the dictionary when you will always find the nominative and the genitive singular. For example, if you will open your dictionary and take a look at Regina, you will see Regina, Regine. You can just check one of you all. Go to Regina and it will be written in this way. You have the nominative and the genitive always ok and you should not be confused that it is nominative of singular and plural because if you notice the endings of the genitive singular and the nominative plural are the same so remember this this is nominative and genitive singular and this applies for the nouns of all the declensions ok so this is how you are supposed to read the dictionary so let's take a look at this Regina then you have Regine Regine Reginam and Regina in the plural 
रेजी ने रेजी नारूम रेजी निस रेजी नास रेजी निस सो वन ऑफ द वेज ऑफ रिमेंबरिंग दिस इज बाय just following this simple rule so what you can do is once you get the nominative so generally when you are given something to decline it will be given to you in the nominative singular so all you have to do is remove the last alphabet and then substitute with these endings so let us take one more word can i wipe these endings or we'll take uh, let's take for example stella which means star okay stella maris star of the sea so so now following this okay i think i will better put it there it will this will be more confusing okay so i'll just erase this one so as i said earlier what we will do is we will remove out this last alphabet and just keep the step so now what would be the nominative singular stella no, genitive singular stella dative stella then accusative salam <laughs> ablative stella similarly plural you will have nominative stelle then stellarum stellis dative plural accusative plural would be stellas and ablative plural would be stellis okay so now there are few small tricks that you can use to kind of remember this for example we see that the nominative singular and the ablative singular the endings are always the same similarly genitive singular dative singular and nominative plural will have the same endings 
and then you have the dative and the ablative plural which also have the same endings okay so now you may wonder if the endings are same in so many cases how do we differentiate what is what right so in that case we have to look at the whole sentence okay as of now let us get this correct then we shall move towards the translation a little bit later so take down another word pecunia which means money and Okay, so are we ready with the first one, pecunia? So, so in the nominative singular, what it would be? Pecunia. Genitive singular. Pecuniae. Then in the dative, pecuniae, then in the accusative singular, pecuniam, and the ablative would be pecunia. Uh, nominative plural, pecuniae, 
then you have pekun niarum then you have in the dative pekun then you have pekunias and you have pekunis so one of the common mistakes here generally comes with this i okay so we see that the i is maintained it is just an addition done <coughs> So let's quickly take a look at the cases. Okay. So what we said is the nominative. What does the nominative case indicate? The subject, right? So therefore, pekunia here would be the money. Then pekunia genitive would be of. Okay. Of the money, then dative is what is the English equivalent? Two or four. Okay. So two or four. Then the accusative is the direct object. Okay. So and then finally, by means of, with the money, by the money. Would be the ablative. Okay, we'll take take a look at Stella first or Vita. So, what would be the nominative singular? Vita, genitive, Vite, then. Dative singular will also be vite. Acquisitive would be and ablative vita. Going to the plural nominative vite. Genitive with arum. Dative with is acquisitive vitas. And ablative would be with this. Okay, so much is clear with the endings. So let's take. Uh, so generally, in the first declension, we have all feminine nouns. So the gender of these nouns are all feminine. However, as in Latin, there are always exceptions. So, which are these exceptional ones, which are of the gender masculine in the first declension? So we have nauta, which means sailor. Then you have agricola. Which means farmer. You have poeta, which means poet, and you have in cola, which means in habitant. Okay, so quickly solve nauta and poeta, and then we'll explain in a little bit more detail. We'll take a look at the cases, and then we can move towards the translation of the sentences.
so how would nauta be declined nominative would be nauta genitive naute dative naute accusative nautam ablative nauta plural naute in the nominative genitive naut arum dative nautis accusative nautas and ablative nautis so here when we look at the cases in the nominative okay so nauta would be the sailor in the plural the sailors then genitive would be of the sailor here of the sailors then dative would be to or for the sailor to or for the sailors in the plural so accusative since it is a direct object a sailor here would be just sailors so we can say he spoke to a sailor and finally ablative with by the sailor <clears throat> if so much is clear now we can put into practice what we have learned of the verbs as well as of the noun so we'll take one sentence इनको ले इन सुलारू ले तीसिया कान आन ओके सो लेट्स क्विकली गो टू द डिक्शनरी एंड फाइंड द मीनिंग्स okay what is inkola inkola we know is inhabitant then insula <coughs> insula is island then letizia joy and 
कनंत कनंत इज सिंग ओके सो नाउ वी हैव वी नो द मीनिंग्स ऑफ दिस वर्ड्स नाउ वी हैव टू ट्राई टू फिगर आउट हाउ टू फॉर्म अ सेंटेंस सो नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द वर्ब सो हियर द वर्ब इज कानन सो व्हाट डज द एंडिंग ऑफ द वर्ब रिवील टू अस ओके कानन इज व्हिच third person plural so what does it mean they sing okay now let's come to so we already know now that the subject will be singular or plural plural so the verb and the subject should always correspond if the verb is plural noun also should be so therefore in pole now will it be genitive singular dative singular or plural of nominative okay so it would be the in habitants now are okay there is only one so we know it is what is the how would we translate insularum of the islands then letitia okay is ablative or is it nominative so nominative is already done right you already have the subject so therefore letitia here is in the ablative therefore with joy so how can we put this sentence together so the inhabitants of the islands sing with joy any doubts still with this let's take one more sentence so femina corona regine in vilam pot tat <coughs> so now quickly let us go to the dictionary and let us find the meanings
Okay, so what does femina mean? Woman. What is corona? Crown, not the virus. Then Regina, we already know, is queen. Okay, villa is house. And what is porta? Carry. Which conjugation is it? How, how many is the third? What is the root of this? Would be for tare. Okay. So now let us take a look at. Let us always start with the verb. Okay. So now looking at for that, what can we identify? Okay, what can we identify looking at Portat? It is singular or plural? Singular. So, what, how can we translate it as? He, she, it carries. Okay. Then, let's now go to the subject. Okay, what is the subject here? Woman. Okay. So it would be singular since the verb is singular, noun also has to be singular. So the woman. Now, corona. Okay. What is which uh, case is corona? Accusative. And what does accusative tell us? It is the direct object. So here the crown. Okay. Then Regine. So now we have to figure out either it can mean genitive singular, it can mean dative singular or it can mean nominative plural. So the best way to solve the confusion is to start by eliminating. So the, the woman carries the crown, okay, either we can say, so obviously nominative is eliminated because it is not the subject. So either it can mean of, now is it singular? Yes, of the queen or we can also say for the queen, both are accepted and therefore Willem is, what is the case here? Accusative, so now we have to also learn one thing, in here is the preposition. Okay, so now there are two small rules that we need to pick up. So, when in, okay, is followed by an accusative, it means into or onto. When in is followed by an ablative, it is translated as in or on. So here it is followed by an accusative, so it would be into the house. So how will we put this sentence together now? Okay, let's put the sentence together. So, so one of the way also is by just 
putting it in this same order okay so the woman okay so carries the crown of the queen into the house now in latin we see most of the times the verb always comes at the end okay so now take one example and solve it by yourselves aquila in aqua chenam vi det okay so let's try to solve this one aquila in aqua chenam vi det so what is aquila mean eagle. aquila is eagle in in would be a preposition aqua is water then chenam and videt what is the which conjugation first and foremost second videre and it is singular which person third person so now let us take a look at the case okay so we know that videt is third person singular so how can we translate videt as okay so it would be he she it sees let's go to the which what next shall we look at the subject so aquila is so how will we translate eagle as the eagle then in aqua so we said if in is accompanied with an accusative it means 
into or onto. If in is accompanied by ablative, it means in or on. So, what is in accompanied by here? Ablative. So, how will we translate in acquires? In the water. Chenam is which case? Acquisitive singular. So, this will be sees dinner. Okay. So, how will we put the sentence together? <coughs> The eagle sees dinner in the water. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. So, <coughs> so when we take a look at aqua, what are the possibilities of aqua? Ending with a. So, it can either be nominative, singular, it can be ablative, singular. Any other? No. So now, we already have the subject, right, in the nominative. So therefore, this has to be the ablative and it is accompanied by in, that is another hint. Okay, so that's why it takes in aqua.